I'm feeling a little Mexican today, so we're making some pork carnitas. We're gonna make little tacos out of that, but you can make burritos, whatever you like. I'm gonna be making this in my slow cooker today, but if you don't have one, or you'd like to speed it up, because that'll take about six hours of cooking time, you could cook this in an Instant Pot, and that'll speed it up to probably about an hour or so. If you don't have an Instant Pot, you can do it on the stove in a regular stock pot, and that would probably take about eh, two and a half, three hours. Now we're gonna go over the cut of meat that you wanna use and the spices and all that good stuff that's coming up. And I'm also gonna show you how to get it nice and crispy because that's what we want our carnitas to have, this little crispy edge on it. I'm Rockin' Robin and I'm gonna show you how to make it right after my chef joke. Which Disney princess loves Mexican food? Come on, I know you know this. <laughs> Taco Bell. All right, we're gonna start off our recipe here with our meat. I've got a boneless pork butt here that has a fair amount of fat on it, but that's what's gonna make it nice and tender and juicy. Now, because of this fat, you're probably gonna to wanna to get at least a four and a half pound roast, maybe even five pounds. Now, I am gonna trim some of the fat off because I don't want too much fat in there. And all that marbling makes for a very delicious piece of meat. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue cutting this up into good, you know, two inch size chunks, and then we'll continue from there. And if you see a piece that's a little heavy on the fat, well, you just turn it over and trim that out if you can. Once all the meat is trimmed up, you can go ahead and place it into your crock pot. Notice the pile of fat I ended up cutting out. Now I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of olive oil to coat the meat before I add the spices. Grab a couple of utensils and toss it up to coat the meat, or you could even use your hands. Sometimes I do that. Now for our spices, we're gonna take a small dish and add a couple of teaspoons of salt, a couple of teaspoons of ground cumin, and don't forget you can get the written recipe below the video in the description area. Next is some ground ancho chili pepper, which gives it a nice smoky flavor. Next is some chili powder to give it a little heat, but it's not too much. If you like a little heat, well, go ahead and feel free to bump it up a little bit. If you know me, you know I love garlic, so in goes a teaspoon of that. Last but not least, we're adding a bit of dried oregano. Give that a good mix, and then we're going to sprinkle it over the pork. I like to apply the spices in thirds and then toss in between each addition. That way it helps to really get it mixed in nice and evenly. Now these spices will have a few minutes to marinate and just really work its way into the meat while we cut up some onions and garlic. Now if you've seen any of my other videos involving onions, you've probably seen me cut onions this way, but I think it really helps people to, to cut them up quickly if they, you know, want to save some time, so check this out. Of course this works great if you're looking for a nice super fine dice, and if you want to avoid as many tears as possible. Let's place our onions right on top of our pork. I know I've already added some garlic powder to this, but now I'm gonna go in for the fresh and I'm gonna add six cloves of this. I promise it won't be too much. Here's our last clove and now I'm gonna give this a little bit of a mix. Remember, if you wanna do this in an instant pot or a stock pot, the only thing that's gonna be different is the amount of time that you cook it. Okay, now for some liquid. We're gonna add about a cup and a quarter of orange juice. So just pour that in. I like to pour it on the sides and not over the top because I don't wanna wash off the, all the spices that are on the meat. So just pour it around the edges and you're good to go. Place the lid on top and set the slow cooker to high. We're gonna let this cook for six hours. We've got plenty of time for chef joke number two. Here we go. What did the duck want in his taco? Walk. <laughs> the house is smelling pretty good right now, let me tell you. And here's our pork after six hours. It's looking good. And I tell you, by the way it feels, I can tell you it's super tender. I'm going to take a slotted spoon and I'm going to drain the pork and I'm going to place some of it on my cutting board here and then I'm going to shred it up. I don't know if you can tell, but when I push on the meat here with my spoon, it is just falling apart. It is tender. Once I get this shredded up, which is so easy to do here, I'm going to place it into a dish to keep it warm. 
Now remember, we've got some juice left in the crock pot. So I'm gonna take that and place it into a saucepan and we're gonna put that on the stove and simmer it down to reduce it for five to 10 minutes. Now this is the step you don't wanna miss because obviously you could serve your meat as it was right out of the crock pot, but this step takes it to the next level. All right, I got a large cast iron pan here and I've just placed some olive oil in the bottom, about a tablespoon. We wanna get this nice and hot. You'll know it's hot when it starts to smoke a little bit. I'm gonna place half of the meat in the bottom of this pan and I'm gonna try and just you know, spread it out so it's nice and even. Now I'm gonna place a nice full ladle of that sauce right over the top and I'm gonna add another one because I wanna make sure there's enough in the pan and it's really gonna sizzle up. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna cook down and then as it cooks down and kind of evaporates and cooks into the meat, it is going to create a nice flavorful crust. At which point we're gonna turn it over in sections. Add a little more sauce to the second side and let it cook for another two to three minutes. And then you can take it out and put it back in a dish. When the first batch is done, I'll place it here in this dish to keep it nice and warm while we cook the second batch and we'll do that the same way. When the second batch is done, I'm gonna follow up with the rest of the sauce and just keep it nice and moist. I'm gonna heat up some corn tortillas, you can do flour if you want, in a dry cast iron pan here and we just wanna flip them over every couple 20 to 30 seconds. Now to serve these up, you can keep it real simple by doing what I'm doing here is I'm adding some Italian dressing to some shredded cabbage. Toss that up a little bit. And now I'm ready to put the tacos together. Here comes those carnitas. We'll put a nice layer of carnitas right down the center of that tortilla. Add a good portion of the cabbage with that dressing right on the top of it. And I'm telling you, the dressing is a must have. It really takes these over the top. It has a nice acidity to it. You're gonna love the combination of flavors. Next, I'm gonna add some slices of avocado. It's gonna add some nice creaminess to your taco. Then I like to finish it off with a nice drizzle of sour cream. And there you have it. This is some fine deliciousness, let me tell you. I cannot wait to dig into this. Oh my goodness, the flavors, I'm telling you, you've got to try it. It is so delicious. This is going to be in your regular rotation, I'm sure of it. It's awesome. You might want to add a little side dish to our pork carnitas, so I think you should try my Spanish rice. It is one of the best Spanish rice recipes I think you'll ever try. Click the link on the screen, it'll take you right to the recipe. Hey, thanks for joining me today in the kitchen. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know by smashing the like button, and if you have any questions at all or recipe requests, let me know down in the comments. We'll see you back here next week for another delicious recipe.